the rainbow chant. So I encourage you, if you're able and you would like to, stand up and you're still around and join us in the day. Put a little energy out. To start the day. All right. think of a song that is better about paradox um, than this one. Believe it or not, words adapted by Keith Seeger from the book of Ecclesiastics in the Bible. And it's popular when we were kids. And I never listened to this popular in my mind. Everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn. Do everything. 
Steve would be here, but it is a fifth Sunday, so he gets to go play today, but I know he's out watching us on Zoom, so hi, Brad. And um, so we're going to start off today what we start every Sunday with, and that is reading our vision mission statement together, which says, we are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. Okay, and I have a few announcements to clear today. A few announcements to cover with everybody before we get started. So to start our pledge program update, um, our goal is 80,000 and we are now at $48,585. So thank you everybody for your pledges. Work to set up our year's programs and let us know what we have to work with in our budget and what kind of fundraisers to put together so that we can operate and uh, be here and our doors open. So thank you. Next, would you like to become a member? If you would like to be a member, there are applications available in the seat back in front of you. We also have them available over on the back counter. Um, or you can also go to our rep website, grantspasscsl.org, and become a member there. Uh, there is a pretty cool little privilege. Uh, all new members do get a six-month digital subscription to the Science of Mind magazine if you would like to uh, qualify for that. So if that's something you're interested in, you're a new member, just let myself know, and we will get you started with that right away. All right, next. All right, we have some exciting news. Our very own practitioner, uh, Deborah Perdue, has an article uh, in the November issue. I'm sorry, guys, I can't see that far back, so I have to come back there. Uh, called Standing on Holy Ground. So make sure we do have copies available in the back in the bookstore, so make sure you get your copy. That's super exciting. There she is, back there. There's Deborah. She's back there. <laughs> All right. Next. All right, guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have a little bit of a celebration thing happening here today. <laughs> so please stay after the service. We are honoring the ancestors and having a little bit of a feast. So the celebration will start right after service. Um, so stay, stay tuned, hang out with us. We're gonna have some music and some food. And we also do have available over here, you'll notice we have an altar set up. This is for us to honor our ancestors. So if you've brought something that you would like to add to the, to the altar, you're welcome to. If you didn't bring something and you would like to add to the altar, we do have paper up here uh, with pens so that we can write names of our loved ones to put up here. And then we also do have a little bit, uh, Bucky's gonna talk a little bit more about it when we get started at the celebration, but we do have some uh, beautiful candles available over here that are a love donation. Um, so you can purchase one of those if you would like and you can put it on the altar and you can take it home with you when you're done. So uh, Bucky will get a little more into that when we start the celebration. So hang out with us. All right, and then next Sunday, we have our Potluck Sunday. 
who needs turkey when we know we really all like the side dishes, right? I mean, that's what we all want anyway. So next Sunday is Side Dish Sunday. Make sure you bring your favorite side dish to share with the congregation. And we are going to be having a concert. Michael Mandrell, an amazing guitarist, is going to be blessing us with his presence and having a concert here at 1230 next Sunday. So hang out with us and um, have some food and enjoy some wonderful music next Sunday. Our unexpected income program is continuing. Uh, we are going to go ahead and meet today. Um, the party's gonna start right after service, but if anybody that is participating in the 40 day prosperity program would like to meet, I am going to be in the conference room right after the service and we'll do a short little meeting there before we come over here and join in the party. So we'll keep that up. And if nobody shows up, well then I'm gonna tell Reverend Steve we have to start all over again. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you believe in angels? We are having an angel discussion group on Tuesday afternoons from 1.30 to 3. Uh, Nancy Yonley is facilitating this, and it's just a great group when they're getting together and they're sharing on their favorite books about angels and just having a discussion on what their experience is with it. So if that's something you're interested in, come on out and join the group. And our metaphysical book study continues from 9 to 945. Uh, that is held next door over in our LEC. And we are currently studying the Science of Mind textbook. So probably be in that for a few years. So uh, come on over. And uh, it's a great book, though. Great read and a great group going on, guys. Great discussion. So come check it out with us. And then we have our meditation group is continuing right after that book study. We have a 15-minute silent meditation that happens in the same room over there in the LEC, and that's led by uh, one of our beautiful practitioners in our practitioner core, um, and that goes from 9.50 to 10.05. And I think that that is the end of my announcement, so if you'd like to stand, we can sing together, we are one. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the Pody practitioner for today. 
And uh, would you please read with me the gratitude that's on the screen? <laughs> I am filled with gratitude to embrace paradox, and in so doing, I help the world heal, and so it is. What is the practitioner, and what do we do? On your seat backs in front of you, there is a gold sheet that explains what practitioners do at Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, and provide our phone numbers as well. These sheets are also on the practitioner table. Remember that you can fill out this yellow slip that's on the back seat backs in front of you. I don't have one up here to show you. But those yellow slips um, are a prayer request. And you just fill those out and uh, put them in the box in the back. And we are going to pray with them for you for a week, all the practitioners. And you can also fill out a prayer request online. And uh, each Sunday after the service, we are available for a short prayer treatment. Uh, practitioners that are here today, could you please raise your hands so we can identify them? Awesome. <laughs> All right, practitioners, I'm glad you're here. If you're available today after uh, service for a short affirmative prayer, we thank you. I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> Today, our table practitioner is Deborah Purdue, and she is holding the high watch for us, and uh, which is like keeping uh, the love and light and the peace in, her, in the forefront of her consciousness, and holding that in her heart in the safe and safe space and place. And uh, she can also direct you to a practitioner and uh, pray for prayer after the service. I also want to do a shout out to hi everyone on Zoom. <laughs> there you are, hi Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, uh, let's read that prayer together that we have on the screen now. Embrace, Embrace all aspects of the life, with ups and downs. I join with all who are inspired to create a world that works for all. Uh, please remain seated as we sing, I am loved. Oh, uh, wait, before we do that, I wanted to mention that today's flowers are from Deborah. And uh, it must be all this excitement. So I also want to welcome any newcomers or people that are present here for the first time. Can you please uh, raise your hand? I'm going to embarrass you just so we can get to know you better. And um, we have a gift for you, a little packet that tells uh, who we are. It's better. This uh, science of my magazine in there as well. All right, and because it is paradox, um, Type thing. That's why I did everything after <laughs> <laughs> So we're all about love here. So we always love to sing this little meditative song. It's very simple. You'll get the hang of it if it's your first time. about <clears throat> there is a way beyond it 
And uh, that's our theme is uh, the genius of Anne. So rather than an either or attitude or perception, we could have an and. There may be another way to this or that, or right or wrong. So there is a poem by uh, Jalal Ludin Rumi, the 13th century Persian poet that resonates deeply for me and my spiritual growth. I first read it uh, in the essential room. And this is just a small portion of it. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there when the souls lie down in that grass. The world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. The verse highlights the realization of the spiritual realm and the exploration <clears throat> Excuse me, of non-judgment and oneness. Some people underestimate spirituality and see it as a trend. But as Pierre Tilhard de Chardin said, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Rumi explored that truth in his poems. We don't just live in the spiritual realm. We are the spiritual realm. To see beyond our physical bodies and realize our true essence has been our purpose since the beginning of time. Rumi wrote about it eight centuries before the extensive spread of spirituality. Additionally, Rumi establishes a firm reality. Either or mindset and black and white thinking are man-made. We are familiar with the beautiful and the ugly, the good and the bad, the true and the false, the right and the wrong. However, below the surface of black and white, there is a gray space we fail to see, a space void of conflicts. We tend to judge the situations that occur in our life. Uh, we label the things uh, that we don't like as bad, and we label the good ones, or the ones we do like, as good. So our dualistic mind sections off emotions, thoughts and events, and we automatically follow it. The fragmented mental division is often the main reason behind our conflicts. To realize these polar extremes is where wisdom is. My piece is to see the interplay of these two without identifying with them. With the genius of and focus, I softly see between these opposites and how they complement each other as one harmonious perfect whole. Thus, if I truly see the interconnectedness of these dualities, I would not judge them as either good or bad, but look at them from a spiritual lens of unity, harmony, peace, and compassion. In this field, which is void of labels and judgments, there is absolute connectedness. As Rumi puts it, even the phrase each other won't make any sense anymore, when we realize our oneness with everything and everyone else. In our own minds, we think we are separate from others, from animals, from nature. The truth is we all stem from one source energy, but we can never truly realize this oneness without letting go of judgments. Seeing every living being as part of us is a step toward gaining a higher realization that doesn't know opposition. Ernest Holm expressed that it is always better to be for something rather than against something. In other words, let us return to the very source of our being and fearlessly be for what we want to see in the world and let go of everything else. We must first let go of judgments before we can enter the spiritual realm and realize our oneness. Thanks to Rumi, whenever I find myself quick to judge or label, which I do, time to time. I take a moment, I create space with the genius of Anne perspective, and remember to head to that field. That is where I become one with everything and everyone. So let us take a moment to reflect on these words, and we'll enter into the silence and just enjoy a few moments of peace, and I will mind the tongue.
Gently bringing your awareness back to the room. And from this place of oneness, anchored in love, I speak my word. I know there is one divine source. I know that it is love, peace, unity, and wholeness. I know that each of us here today is inseparably connected with source because we are all divine emanations of spirit. Today, let us choose to sow the seeds with a consciousness that is truth, harmony, and love. May we choose with the wisdom of the creative genius of and. That mindset which expresses our highest truth, let us see more than just one side and awaken to the gifts of both sides that they offer us. May we be for something rather than against something that our choices foster a more loving and tolerant view of each and every one. So now guided by the love of pure spirit, I speak a word of blessing in advance for this space and place uh, and all that is revealed and healed today, that transpires here today. And I know this service is blessed, with good food and good people and music and a great talk. And so I know that, uh, uh, we're going to be blessed right now with Chip and Bucky. We're going to do a special music. And also, Jamaica, we're going to be followed by Ms. Jamaica Wallace's amazing inspirational message. I am so deeply grateful for these blessings and uh, the amazing shift in consciousness. And so, with great joy and conviction, and I release my word into the living law of mind, which always says yes. And so it is. Yes. 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 When I wrote this song, I thought of a wonderful piece that's actually a choral piece. And it just seemed fitting for our ancestors' celebration. But the chorus is a piece called Requiem. And it's often done in a Gregorian or in, in a Mass in Catholic Church. But the great line is um, of it is Sing me to heaven. And in that implies that singing does something. It's more than just an entertainment. It's movement. In fact, in many cultures, the words for sing and dance are the same word. And so it implies moving through. And this is sort of the paradox. Uh, and the song is called Sing Me Into Wonder. Sing me up to wonder. Sing me into peace. Sing me out from hunger. Burdens that I can. Oh, sing through. 
the genius of the and that brings solution, possibility, and potentials that exist. We will explore releasing ourselves from the bondage of the known and stepping into the unknown where par paradox plays. Jim Collins states in his book, V2.0, builders of greatness are comfortable with paradox. They don't oppress themselves with the tyranny of or, which pushes people to believe that things must be A or B, but not both. Instead, they liberate themselves with the genius of the and. So this month, we are expanding our ability to live out loud in every area of life through playing and exploring in paradox. Paradoxes are a natural part of life. The more that we can embrace this truth, the more we can find solutions to the major problems that we are facing individually, within our lives, our communities, and in our world. We will explore what it means to use critical thinking and develop a paradox mindset. How to use our curiosity and vulnerability to get comfortable outside of our comfort zone and find that opposite of absolute truth is not a falsehood, but rather another absolute truth. Once we have deepened our own ability to play in paradox, we will apply this thinking to the paradoxes that inform and direct our lives in the world. And we will learn, lean into using paradox to bring relevance to the idea of creating a world that works for everyone as we play in paradox out loud. 
So when we can truly embrace the genius of the and, our paradox mindset is a way to move forward. Science of mind is uniquely poised at the tipping point of creating a world that works for all. And we must utilize the power of our teaching to bring people together into a solution of a third way. As we embrace all aspects of life, navigating the ups and downs, working together to see the benefit of others' perspectives, and solving problems that were created at a time when solutions seemed impossible, we find that a paradox mindset is the natural next step in our spiritual evolution. This was true for me personally. Uh, paradox allowed me to escape the torture of either or thinking. For many, many years, I could, all, I believed that there was only one religion, there was one book, one name for God, and I was right, and if you didn't think what I thought, you were wrong, <laughs> and that was all there was. <laughs> um, and honestly, for me, that was really a lot like trying to look at the world through a telescope on the wrong end. <laughs> Anybody ever tried to look through the telescope on the wrong end? You get this little tiny little dot, right? But for me, when I opened up to and, all of a sudden that telescope turned around, it flipped, and I was suddenly seeing the entire world expanded, and I could see spirit in everything. It's amazing what that and could do. So in this teaching, we believe in one mind. Our statement of belief declares, we believe that universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God. And that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. This means that all of the paradoxes that we see in the world must be in their totality an aspect of the one this also means that all of the problems challenges polarities either or thinking suffering and ways that the world isn't working currently must also be aspects of the one mind realizing the truth that there is no separation allows us to open our minds to a greater understanding of the world and embrace, embrace the genius of Anne's thinking. So we have a little holiday called Halloween coming up here in a few days. Has anybody heard of that? <laughs> well, Halloween has a very complex and multifaceted history, and it's a great example of the and paradox. Over 2,000 years ago, the ancient three-day Celtic festival of Samhain was a precursor to Halloween. Samhain concluded the three days with the transition to a new year that began November 1st. In their celebrations, they would light bonfires to appease the gods and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. The ancient Celts believed the dead would rise from their graves on Samhain and wander the countryside. Fruit and plates of food would be placed on the doorsteps as gifts to appease the hungry spirits. Citizens would don costumes to hide themselves from the wandering spirits and walk door to door reciting verses in exchange for food. The dark colors of Samhain were orange, representing the dying fall colors, and black, signifying winter's death. The Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the living and dead became blurred, as we can see with the presence of ghosts and zombies. So is this starting to sound a little familiar there a little bit, anybody? Yeah. So in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November the 1st as a time to honor all saints. A celebration called All Hallows Eve took place. The day celebration was similar to the three-day Samhain festival with big bonfires and parades. 
And eventually Samhain blended into All Hallows' Eve, a one-day one celebration on October the 31st. That became Halloween. So the blurring of life and death remained, symbolized by people dressing in costume as angels and devils, and the holiday was born out of the end. So we can see that spirituality is full of paradox. We talk about masculine and feminine energy, consciousness and matter, living in a world but not of the world, our inner and outer landscape, Everything we see is a manifestation of our system of beliefs. The unseen is creating the scene. There's a little Chinese symbol called the yin and yang. Anybody seen that one before? Yeah. It's another wonderful symbol that represents the genius of the ant. We know that not only are these seemingly opposites, really just two sides of the same coin, but that there is a mixing of the two into a third way. And this is represented by the small amount of dark in the light and the light in the dark. Spirituality has been calling us to find a third way. It's calling for us to let go of our either or thinking so that we can embrace the possibility of the and and step into something new. So where exactly can we find this and? Where is and? Ernest Holmes was actually really great at giving us an example of this and holding paradoxes in his mind while creating the genius of the and. So many of us may be asking right now, how can I practice the and in a world that is filled with so much suffering? Ernest Holmes said, it is a popular belief that those who practice this science are in a class of people who declare that everything is perfect when in fact everything in the objective experience of the race is not perfect and indeed is far from being perfect. This popular idea of the practice of, sci of spiritual science is entirely a misconception. A religious scientist is not one who assures themselves that wrong is right, that evil is good, that limitation is freedom, that bondage is liberty, or that sickness is health. They do not claim that our objective experience is an illusion, but they do make this claim that behind the phenomena of human and material existence, Behind the slow and persistent process of evolution, there is, as Emerson stated, one mind common to all people. They claim that this mind is perfect and that they have access to this mind. Ernest understood that we can see from both perspectives simultaneously, that our objective experience is real and that there is one mind back of all things. Both of these ideas must be held and known simultaneously in order for us as religious scientists to truly step up and create a world that works for all. So we can find the and just beyond our comfort zone. When we let go of certainty and embrace paradox, we find the end every time we release our attachment to an old paradigm and step into a new way of being. We are being called to embrace the end in everything we do as we support one another in shifting our thinking and stand in one mind. So the genius of the end can literally launch us forward like a rocket. Science of mind holds a unique perspective that is valuable and necessary to continue to move forward. Because of the nature of Ernest Holmes and other new thought metaphysical teachings, studying science of mind leads itself to developing a paradox mindset. This mindset is key in finding a third expansive, inclusive way 
which is necessary to healing the challenges of the world and bring our outer manifestation as a collective into alignment with the inner truth of oneness. The key is our willingness to stay open and curious as we explore options and possibilities that have yet to be discovered. Finding and walking a third way requires us to constantly step outside of our comfort zone and live our lives in the vulnerability of uncertainty. So author Hannah Inham states, authenticity is not possible without embracing the end within us. Our minds like to categorize things into neatly labeled boxes. I am right or she is right. Let's stretch our minds to I can be right and so can she. Embracing the and is like doing yoga for the brain. I like that part. <laughs> when we train ourselves to hold paradox by stretching ourselves out of the boxes of our minds, we create, we stretch into new possibilities and adapt more quickly in this fast changing world. Ernest Holmes reminds us in Science of Mind that there is no stagnation in spirit, nor should there be any in our idea of spirituality. To be spiritual is to create. The spirit is alive, conscious, aware, and active. So, if you would like to do a little yoga for your brain this week, I do have a little challenge for you. If you so choose, it's completely up to you. And I invite you to spend some time this week researching a topic that you have a very strong opinion about. Perhaps you already know lots about this topic, or perhaps an emotional reaction within you causes you to stand on one side of the polarity without seeing the benefits of the other side. So as you research, I invite you to look out for the benefits of the <laughs> other side. And I also invite you to pay attention and notice maybe your overuse of your perspective. What is the possible third way? Can you open and expand and invite in the possibility and see it? Just again, something if you want to do it. If you want to do a little yoga, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Another great reminder Ernest gives us is this. Life is for us today. There will be no change for tomorrow unless we do the changing today. Today we are setting in motion the power of tomorrow. Today is God's day and we must extract from it what of life we are to live. So in conclusion, each of us has the ability to live our lives from the genius of the end. We must be willing to set down our preconceived ideas and old beliefs, cultural mindset, childhood patterns, the A or B thinking, and step into something brand new. Our teaching has cultivated fertile ground in our thinking and developed a natural paradox mindset. Using this mindset and our unique teaching, we will truly create and step into a world that works for all life, including all of humanity, all animals, plants, life, and all of Mother Gaia. The events in these past decade, including the swift ushering of the new normal with the COVID-19 pandemic have all been acting as a catalyst to swift us away from our polarized thinking and into a third way. So it's time for us to step up and live from the potentiality and possibility that we know is available to us through this teaching, Science and Mind. And so it is. <laughs>
Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll follow our teaching and do go into prayer. So I invite you now to close your eyes or gaze at the candles or something that's pretty for you to look at. Let's just take a deep breath inward and allow that breath to bring us into our sacred place of oneness. Out beyond the ideas of right doing and right wrongdoing, there's a field and I'll meet you there. In the place of stillness, in the one mind, the place of peace, and ease. It's in this place of oneness that my heart and my mind open and expand, and it feels so good. And I know that there is a creative energy flowing through all things. This is what created the universe, stars, moons, planets, the humans, animals, plants. Even the tiniest little microbe is all a part of this one. God, goddess, great spirit, Buddha. There is many different names as there are creations and spirit is limited by none. There is absolutely no stagnation in spirit. Spirit is creation. Spirit is alive conscious, aware, and active within me right now. And because I know this is true for me, I know this is true for all of us here because we are one. And I know that life is for us today. God is not limited by space or time. And that we are each beautiful individualized expressions of truth. We are paradox. And as we open up to this alignment of our truth, we are expanding our minds and our hearts. When we open to the possibility of something new, we are allowing for our growth. I may not know what challenges you are facing right now, but the one mind does. And I know we are each a part of that one mind. That mind has limitless solutions and in the great and available to us all. So I speak my word now claiming divine alignment for each of us here as we step into paradox and remember who we are. I claim our good in every part of our lives. And my heart is filled with great gratitude joy and love, knowing that this universe is always conspiring for us in every way. I know there is not a spot where God is not, and for this I give great thanks. And so I release these words directly into that law that is always receptive, always says yes, 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 knowing that it is done. I fully let go, and we can all affirm this together by saying, yes. Hey, I think we're going to go into our offertory now. And it's on screen. Okay. If you have what you'd like to offer, you can take it out and offering your love and place it on our heart, and we can recite together our sharing affirmation. God is lavish, unfailing abundance, the rich omnipresent substance of the universe. This infinite prosperity is individualized as me, the reality of me, and so it is establishing the benefit to the center. And so it is. Sorry, I jumped ahead, guys. <laughs> So this, this is a fun day to play here watching you all. I don't usually get to play, you know, to uh, 
Hocus Pocus 3. Yeah. I'm assuming everyone is the good witch of yeah. whatever. <laughs> but you learn something every time that watching, listening to Jamaica, I kept looking at her hair and I said, look at that turquoise and pink. And there is a spiritual Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is a song about paradox and about stepping into change when the paradox is we know we need to change, but we don't know exactly where it's going to take us. And um, I must always, I always thank our former Reverend Michelle, who once when we were talking about change said, well, you have to make change your, your friend. And I thought, well, that's a paradox. Because I could say, I'll be fine if I can make this change my friend, I'll be fine. Or I could say, if I can make change my friend, I'll be fine. Yeah. And both of them are true. Mm -hmm. And sitting out one night this recent week, we have some meter showers in the last couple weeks, and so this is sort of the image of stepping into the change when we don't quite know what's on the other side, but we know we got to go there. <laughs> Find the good if 
could do me in the end if I made this change my friend. Yes, change. over these tidings. They are proof of our ability to manifest in this world of glory. I know that they bless the giver and the receiver. They allow our beautiful home to operate and be available to all who are remembering who they are. They allow us to do good works in our spiritual home and in our community. And for this, I know we are also very blessed. And I release this with love and gratitude into the universal law, and so it is. So it is. All righty, we have our closing song, right? Okay. Yeah, right? Yeah, okay, we have a closing song. Woo-hoo. And we're going to sing stand, and so why don't we stand? And uh, I think we all, we all know paradox because I've often heard, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. I own a lot of boots and I've stood there pulling on those straps a lot. And I don't go anywhere, but I can pull my boots on and stand, and then we need a little help. So here we go.